On the 9th of November, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih delivered a keynote address at a reception held in his honor at the Meal Park Hotel in Nagoya, Japan. The event was attended by more than 100 influential dignitaries and guests, which included many members of parliament, faith leaders, lawyers, professors, and corporate leaders. <laughs> アッサラムアレイクム。そしてこんばんは。本日は多様の中世界アハマディアムスリム教会の最高指導者ハズレットミルザマスルールアハマシの来日記念式典にご出席いただき誠にありがとうございます。本日司会者を務めさせていただく日
敵意に刺激されて、公正に扱いえざるなかれ、公正,公正に努めよ、祖は畏敬に最も近い、しかしてアルラを恐れ、敬え、下にアルラはお前たちの所業を熟知したまう、アルラは信じて善行を積む、人々のために、斜面と素晴らしき報酬があらんことを約束せり。ありがとうございました。Thank you. Today is a very blessed day for us. We are welcoming the fifth Khalifa of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. Before introducing Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Asahil Aziz, I shall introduce the Ahmadiyya community who has organized this event. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community was founded in 1835 in a small village in Qadian, India. The community has branches spread over more than 200 countries worldwide. Its adherents have exceeded 20 million. All over the world, it runs 15,000 mosques, more than 500 schools, and more than 30 hospitals. The Ahmadiyya community has translated the Holy Quran into more than 70 languages. It also runs a 24 hour broadcasting satellite channel, Muslim Television Ahmadiyya, MTA International, and is presenting the true teachings of Islam, of tolerance and peace, throughout the entire world through its various literature. Apart from this, we are also rendering our services through an organization called Humanity First that provides aid to people after natural disasters and other relief projects. This is based on our love for the whole of humanity. In Japan, we started our activities in 1935. The earthquake that occurred in 1995 in Hanshin, this was followed by Niigata earthquake three years ago. The Ahmadiyya community played its role in the aftermath of the tsunami and the earthquake. It tried to demonstrate the true picture of Islam to the people of Japan. The humanitarian aid is all done in light of the guidance given by our spiritual leader. In view of creating a peaceful society, every week in his Friday sermon and in other addresses and through other forms of media, those addresses are disseminated and are becoming a means of spreading peace. Upon the Imam's visit to Japan, we feel greatly happy to welcome him. We thank you all from the depths of our hearts. For the welcome address, we would like to invite a very respectable friend who the community has gotten to know during the tsunami relief, Mr. Yoshiaki Shouji. Good evening. I am currently serving as the Member of Parliament for the city Ishinomaki in province of Miyagi. At the time of the tsunami, you helped us a lot, and so, firstly, I would like to thank you all. How can we get back on our feet after this disaster? In regards to this, the advice of your spiritual leader and a lot of the other aid and assistance that you, the members of the Ahmadiyya community, have offered, and therefore I am indebted for your friendship and strong bond. It had been five days since the tsunami, on the 16th of March, when the president of the Japanese branch of the Ahmadiyya community, Mr. Anis Ahmed Nadim, and Ayaz Najibullah, came to a shelter in an elementary school. After the disaster, within 14 minutes until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, these people, the Ahmadiyya community in Japan, took the immediate initiative to help in order to help these affected areas. Therefore, they chose an area in the city of Sinde to start their humanitarian activities and then proceeded to an area that had been most severely destroyed, the city of Shinomaki. What did they do for us? They have done so much for us. For instance, Humanity First arranged the food. They arranged Pakistani dishes, curry. Curry for us is not something we eat every day, but you eat curry on a daily basis. There is a variety of curries, for instance, meat, mutton, beef, and lentils of different kinds. 
Without proving bothersome, we continued eating these varieties. There was also a professional cook, Nasser Ahmed Bhatti. He cooked very delicious food for us. These were memorable days for us. After the disaster, aid reached us from all over the world. These volunteers had indeed demonstrated their commitment through their actions. Each day, we would observe and think to ourselves how committed and devoted these volunteers actually were. Their manner was not forceful or overbearing. Instead, they dealt with us in a friendly manner with much love. The manner in which they conducted themselves, we could tell, was anything but ordinary. Here I would like to introduce you to a book. The book is called The Identity of an Ahmadi Muslim in the Global Circumstances. My elder sister Michiko had died while she was young. Michiko left behind three daughters. One daughter is sitting among us. Please stand up. This is my niece and she has written this book. She has been researching on fatwa in Egypt. This is an area within Islam. She is now researching on this community. This was such a coincidence. It was like a miracle and I believe this to be a sign from God. I would like to express my gratitude to all the members of Humanity First, all the members of the Ahmadiyya community and His Holiness under whose supervision this is being carried out. I am so happy that he is gracing Japan. I really appreciate His Holiness the Khalifa, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed. I really appreciate to His Holy or Caliph Mirza Masrur Ahmad for us to welcome to Japan from the bottom of the, our heart. And we would like to listen to your message how to cope with the problem of human beings, especially Regretful to say, most of Japanese people forgot what we did in 18 years ago when the great earthquake occurred in Kobe. Not only Kobe earthquake, great Tohoku earthquake occurred two and a half years ago. But in Kansai area, people forgot. They enjoyed their own economic prosperity. They lost to love neighbors and welfare to the other people. So on the 1st of September, Representative Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, Mr. Anis, joined our trip to Tohoku to console the Buddhism, Sinto Shrine, and Eastern Orthodoxy. At that time, we are touched with his modesty and religious attitude to cooperate with other monks of the religion of Buddhism. That kind of broad mind and generous attitude, I'm sure, this is a key to console and solve the conflict of tribes, religion, and all of the problems on this globe. We really appreciate your visiting Japan. Thank you very much, inshallah. Yoshio Iwamura-sama, arigatou gozaimashita. 
続きまして、愛知県弁護士会の那島昭夫様が歓迎の挨拶を行います。那島昭夫様、よろしくお願いします。I am a lawyer and belong to the Aichi Bar Association. My name is Najima Uko. Thank you for inviting me to today's peace symposium. I was first introduced to the Ahmadiyya community about 20 years ago. Actually, it would be more accurate to say 25 years ago. I have helped Ahmadis legally in their asylum cases, and that was how I was first introduced to them. Firstly, I will talk about the Japanese refugees' recognition system and the Ahmadiyya community, and then talk about the services they rendered afterwards at the time of the tsunami. First, I will mention something relating to the refugees. In 1981, Japan signed an agreement with regards to refugee recognition. But unfortunately, soon after this, objections were raised both inside and outside the country. That Japan has a very strict policy regarding refugees. In this regard, there is something which we cannot forget. In 1951, when the contract was made in San Francisco, Sir Zafrullah Khan Sahib delivered a speech. At the time, he was the foreign minister of Pakistan, a very devout member of the Ahmadiyya community. He said, We must establish peace in Japan with equality and justice, not with hatred and vengeance. In this manner, he safeguarded the Japanese stance. We must always keep in mind the spirit of Mr. Khan's speech. As far as the wider international relations are concerned, a part of which is refugee recognition, there is a need to honestly act upon this speech. You just heard the report of the beautiful services rendered by Humanity First following the tsunami. As a Japanese, I wish to express my heartfelt gratitude and thankfulness. The organization of Humanity First, which was established by the Ahmadiyya community and is run by volunteers, set off with its limited resources the day after the tsunami in order to provide relief to the affected area. They reached the affected area after making a difficult journey which lasted over 10 hours. They began their work in an elementary school located in Ishrana, in the province of Miyagi. This was a sudden calamity. Hence, no doubt, the members of the community were busy in their usual work. However, following the guidance of the missionary in charge, Mr. Anis Ahmed Alim, members of the community gave precedence to efforts in providing aid over other matters. Having collected a sum of approximately 2 million yen, they all got together and worked hard day and night in order to achieve the objective of the relief efforts. They established a deep, heartfelt relation with those affected. I wish to narrate a very important incident to you. This is the story of an old lady from those who were affected. An Ahmadi University student narrated that when the relief helicopter reached the affected area, this old lady hid herself in order to save younger people so that they would have the opportunity of escaping. This young man said that upon seeing this, he hid himself and cried in seclusion. I can understand the sentiments of this young man very well. It is very pleasing that in the past few years, the youth of Japan have also showed their passion in devoting themselves for voluntary work. The passion of the Ahmadi youth, together with the passion of the Japanese youth, presents a promising future of harmony. I have presented a historic incident and mentioned some of the services of the Ahmadiyya community. In the end, with the guidance of Hazur, leaving history and traveling into the future with the spirit of love for all, hatred for none, it is my heartfelt wish and prayer that the Ahmadiyya community of Japan should also prosper in our journey towards achieving worldwide peace. Najima Uko sama, thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Hudo Sho, Member of Parliament, for the welcome address.
I am very thankful to all of you for this invitation to participate in this great gathering of the Ahmadiyya community Japan today. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya community, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, for his arrival in Japan. I had prepared a speech, however Mr. Najima has mentioned everything, so I will not read out my speech. I am very thankful to you for your sentiments regarding the establishment of worldwide peace and for your great help during various disasters in Japan. I am a member of the Japan Parliament Disaster Relief Committee. We are planning how we can carry out relief work. The most important part of the planning is to go out and meet the affected people and listen to what they have to say. Japan stood on its own feet after the Second World War. However, we need to think and tell the public where we can find real peace. I wanted to listen to Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed's speech attentively, but due to other engagements I have to beg leave after these words of welcome. We do not know when the next disaster might strike. Nevertheless, we should live our lives with peace, love and thankfulness. Once again, I would like to express my gratitude to Hazur from the bottom of my heart on the occasion of his arrival in Japan and I will request all of you to listen to Hazur's speech carefully and go back to your areas and pass on his message. Mr. Hudo Sho, thank you. We have received a message of congratulations from the governor of the Aichi province, Mr. Umara, who could not make it here today. I welcome the head of the Ahmadiyya community upon his arrival in Japan. I am very sorry for not being able to meet you earlier today due to official business. The Ahmadiyya community in Japan undertakes many different initiatives in order to integrate with the Japanese. I have also learned that after the tsunami, your community took part in the relief work. It is my prayer that you are able to offer your services in this society in the future as well. Governor of Aichi Province, Umara Iliaki. Now awards will be presented to three individuals. First of all, this award will be presented to the member of Aichi Bar Association, lawyer and a great supporter of the Ahmadiyya community, Mr. Najima. Now an award will be presented to a member of parliament of Ishrana province, who together with members of the Ahmadiyya community Japan offered his services after the tsunami, Mr. Shoji. Now an award will be presented to Japan's first Ahmadi Muslim to have completed the revision of the translation of the Holy Qur'an, which he himself started 30 years ago, despite having reached the age of 82, Mr. Muhammad Owes Koesh. Thank you very much. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Good evening. Upon the arrival of our beloved Imam, Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed Ayyaduhullah Ta'ala bin Nasrihil Aziz in Japan, these days are a source of great blessing for us. Today, the Ahmadiyya community is offering its services in various countries of the world. Words of praise are said by politicians or professors in favor of the Ahmadiyya community in many countries of the world. All these services are rendered under the guidance of Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasrihil Aziz. The Ahmadiyya community has reached the stage today due to the guidance of Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasrihil Aziz.
It is my prayer that this day should prove to be a source of blessings for all those guests who have come here today. And it would be a source of great pleasure for us if the teaching of true peace may reach you. I wish to express my sentiments of gratitude to all of you upon your arrival here today. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the gracious, our merciful. All the distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon you all. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of the guests for accepting our invitation to this evening's reception. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Japan is very small and the majority of our members who live here are either Pakistani or, or, or of Pakistani origin or from other non-Japanese backgrounds. Yet, despite this, you are attending our function. And so, certainly, this proves your open-heartedness and kindness. This gesture is even more praiseworthy given that you have come to attend an event hosted by a Muslim sect at a time when a great, great fear and mistrust of Islam has developed in much of the world. And so, bearing all of this in mind, it is essential I offer my gratitude to all of you. In a society, it is very normal to say thanks, um, say thank you, or to express appreciation as a courtesy to others. <coughs> However, those people who follow the true teachings of Islam do not express gratitude out of any formality, but do so because our master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, taught that a person who does not express thanks to his fellow being is also ungrateful to God Almighty. Thus, to offer thanks is an essential part of faith for any true Muslim. Islam's true teachings are so complete and beautiful that at every level they guide believers towards an enlightened path lit up with love, affection, and brotherhood. However, regretfully, there is a large group of Muslims who have forgotten these teachings and are now involved in entirely wrong acts. They are being led by their so-called religious scholars or leaders who are misguiding them for purely selfish reasons and only to fulfill their own vested interests. They justify such acts in the name of Islam, even though what they teach has nothing to do with its pure and noble teachings. Islam's very name means peace and brotherhood. The Arabic world from which the word Islam derives means to spread peace and security and to spread compassion and love. These teachings form the reality of Islam. Furthermore, 
Allah, the Almighty, commands Muslims to not only adopt these attributes themselves, but also to spread peace, love, and affection throughout the world. Allah has emphasized <coughs> such compassionate teachings to such an extent that he has commanded that a Muslim should not exhibit any form of injustice even against his most ardent enemy. In chapter 5, verse 9, the Holy Quran, of the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty says, O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness. Furthermore, for the sake of establishing the highest standards of fairness and equality, Allah commands Muslims, in another verse of the Holy Quran, to become witness in the cause of justice for Allah, even if it means they have to testify against themselves, their parents, or their loved ones. Thus, these are the standards of justice advocated by the Quran, and they underpin Islam's desire to prevent all forms of cruelty. Throughout the Holy Quran, Allah has given teachings of love, affection, and spirit of reconciliation. In today's world, we find that some so-called Muslims are involved in the most barbaric and horrific crimes, whereby they are even killing innocent women and children indiscriminately through suicide bombings and terror attacks. How tragic and sorrowful it is that they are committing such heinous acts. Certainly, what they are doing is completely against the teachings of Islam. Indeed, the Quran says that the killing of just one innocent person is akin to killing all of mankind. And so, under no circumstances, does a Muslim have the right to commit such atrocities? One crime which Islam has deemed even worse than murder is to create disorder and strife. The reason for this is that the harm caused by those who seek to create disorder can reach unimaginable levels. Disorder and strife can easily escalate, causing huge conflicts to erupt at whatever level of society is targeted. Be it the family home, the town or city, the wider society, or in terms of the relation between different nations. The result of such conflicts can be extreme bloodshed and violence from both sides. And so that is why Allah has said in the Quran that those who create disorder are committing a crime that is even greater than unlawful killing. Hence, these are the beautiful teachings of Islam, and it is these very teachings that the Ahmadiyya Muslim community adopts and spreads to all parts of the globe. You should not think that our teachings are a new form of Islam. As I have already said, it is from the Holy Quran. It is not a different teaching. Rather, the reality is that these are the teachings of the founder of Islam, the Holy Prophet, Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. And about the latter days, 
The Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, prophesied that a time would come when Muslims would be consumed by darkness and would deviate entirely from the teachings of the Holy Quran. He said at that time, a person would appear who would be truly guided by Allah and who would impart the true Islam and establish the real character of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, to the world. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community believes that our founder, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadiyan, was that very person who was sent for the spiritual reformation of this era and whose task was to spread the true message of Islam to the corners of the world. <coughs> it is to ful fulfill these objectives that we, Ahmadi Muslims, translate the Holy Quran into various language, languages of the world, build mosques, establish mission houses, and preach our message wherever and whenever we can. Our mosques are symbol of peace and beacon of light. Normally, those who do not know the real Muslims, sometimes they are afraid of mosques. But remember that the mosques are beacon of light that illuminate their surroundings. And so, in our mosques, apart from the worship of God, the rights of God's creation are fulfilled and schemes are developed to serve humanity and those in need. Thus, our mosques are not built to cause any pain to mankind, but on the contrary, are built for the sake of protecting and loving all people. If we look back at the very early history of Islam, we see that during the first 13 years of his prophethood, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be and blessing of Allah be upon him, and his followers were subjected to the most brutal persecution at the hands of the disbelievers of Mecca. As a result of the sustained opposition, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was eventually forced to migrate to the city of Medina. However, despite being driven out of their homes, he and his companions were not left alone in peace, <coughs> but rather some 18 months later, the disbelievers traveled from Mecca and waged war in an effort to entirely eliminate Islam and to kill the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him and his followers. Upon such circumstances, Allah commanded that Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, to raise an army of Muslims to fight back against the Meccan forces. However, within this command, there was a shining example of Islam's beauty that is truly unparalleled. Allah said in the Quran, that permission to fight was given because those who wished to kill the Muslims were not just opposed to Islam, but were opposed to all religions. Thus, Allah said that if the Muslims did not respond to their attack, then no churches, no synagogues, no temples, no mosque, nor indeed any place of worship 
would remain safe. And so permission for this defensive war was given as a means to protect the people of all religions. Consequently, whenever and wherever in the world the Ahmadiyya community builds a mosque, we do so with the belief and conviction that it is our duty to protect the places of worship of all religions. And the doors to the mosque, which are for the worship of the one God, are always open for the people of all religions. It is certainly the case that our mosques and our teachings are filled entirely with peace, love, and affection. We wish to serve and assist all people who are in any form of distress or difficulty. We wish to alleviate their suffering because that is true Islam. This is why we are running humanitarian projects on permanent basis in the poor countries of the world. And we are also helping those people who are suffering from any natural disaster. And this is why our teams have worked and still working in the affected areas of tsunami and other natural disaster hit. In today's world, at all levels, people are raising their fingers and accusing one another of destabilizing the world and destroying its peace. And at a political level, some nations are accusing others of acting in this way. Indeed, it is a cause of great regret that some Muslim countries are riven with conflict, whereby the leaders and their people are fighting one another. They are involved in such extreme bloodshed, even though the need of the time is for establishing peace and to stop unnecessary accusations and criticism of one another. Having witnessed the cruel acts of some so-called Muslims, I am sure many of you will have reservations or even a fear of Islam and consider it to be a religion of terrorism. But the truth is truth and reality of Islam is what I have explained to you and not what is commonly portrayed. <coughs> Islam is not an extremist or harsh religion, though it cannot be denied that evil and utterly wrong practices have developed amongst certain so-called Muslims. What they profess and how they act are completely wrong, yet to deem the religion as barbaric is surely unjust. Thus, where it is said that Islam is a religion of terrorism and extremism, it can only cause great pain and distress to Ahmadis and other Muslims who seek to follow the true teachings of the religion. Therefore, people should not unjustly injure the feelings of innocent Muslims by calling Islam an evil or cruel religion when nothing could be further from the truth. In my capacity as the head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, I have been constantly warning the people and nations of the world that it is imperative that we spread love and affection in today's world. 
rather than spreading hatred and igniting grievances amongst one another. The need of the time is for us to stop forward, uh, to step forward with a spirit of reconciliation because if we do not become true ambassadors of peace, a great calamity could easily befall the world. Today, even a number of smaller nations have come to possess nuclear weapons, and it is quite possible that they could eventually end up in the hands of extremists who do not care or realize that uh, realize what devastation can be caused by such weapons. As I said, I am trying to make the world aware of the grave risks that exist. And so I request all of you to also try your utmost to promote peace in the world. You should make all parties aware that rather than treading a path of cruelty and severity, and rather than looking at each other through a lens of hatred, we should all look at one another through the, a lens of love and peace. Where cruelty exists, we should make efforts to bring it to an immediate end. The Japanese nation and its leaders comprise those people who understand the necessity for world peace more than any other people. You are those people who know the full devastating effects of the nuclear weapons and the carnage that ensues. You are the people who know better than any other the horrific consequences of modern warfare. Thus, I would request you all to play your effective role in this regard. Play your effective role in bringing peace in the world. It is my prayer that may Allah grant the leaders and people of the world the ability to act with wisdom so that a collective effort can be made to stop all cruel and barbaric elements of society from their heinous activities. Whilst every government claims they wish to end all forms of cruelty and save the world from destruction, yet it looks that two blocks are being formed in the world before our very eyes. The opposing blocks are engaged in claims and counterclaims against one another. And through such statements, the friction between them is increasing by the day. The only possible result of such acts will be increasing hostilities and peace will become an ever more distant dream. Thus, once again, I pray that may Allah grant the world wisdom and sense. I pray that instead of spreading malice and hatred, all parties join together and make a collective effort to end all forms of evil so that our future generations can be saved from the indescribable destruction that would certainly arise if nuclear weapons were ever used again by any country. At the end, I would like to once again thank all of you for taking the time to attend this event and for listening to what I have said today. May Allah bless you all and may Allah bless this great nation of Japan. Thank you very much.
最後になりますがハズオールからあのドアをお願いしたいと思います皆さん黙祷をお願いします自分の好きな自由な形でお願いしますドアはい、ありがとうございましたその我々は日本人としてイスラム教というのはいろんな情報が入ってますね。でも今日 Today, when I got to know more about this unique community and the work you do for humanity, I came to the conclusion that this is indeed a very revered religion. I felt that this is that mighty leadership for the new era. His Holiness said that in order to spread peace, we should examine our state of affairs first. This point most definitely struck the hearts of all the listeners. Today, when I heard His Holiness speak, regardless of the difference in speech, I got this impression that he is a very tender hearted and enthusiastic person, and his knowledge encompasses various languages, cultures, and history. This is what I noticed. His message is almost always of peace, but this time, when various incidents of the Holy Prophet were narrated, I thought that you Ahmadis must belong to the same category of people who did Hijrat. Ahmadis span all over the world and help different people, and they meet non Muslims like us, sharing the message of peace. I was very surprised at first when I saw you because of your unity. I was amazed at this because this cannot be found in other Muslims. His Holiness's speech was amazing and it was brimming with faith and conviction. If this speech was not delivered with this context, it would not have struck the hearts.